All right, so after you're done with all of your cutting, the next step is to sew these padded circles. Um, I like to call them pancakes, but they're basically just um, fabric on two sides and they're different prints because what's gonna happen is you're gonna later, when you're assembling your quilt, you're gonna be folding these over and stitching this down. So you wanna make sure that there's two different prints on each side, um, preferably complementary prints, um, so that it shows up nicely um, against the other print. Um, so there's two fabrics, different on each side, and then there's batting in the center. So I'm gonna show you how to sew these. So the first thing that you do is you're gonna take um, your two fabric circles that you choose, that you chose, um, I thought that these two look nicely together. Um, and then you're going to put them right sides facing together. Line them up as best as you can with the right sides facing together. Um, and then you're gonna take a batting circle and then you're gonna layer that right underneath it. So what I have here is um, two pieces of fabric, right sides facing together with a batting circle underneath and they're all lined up nicely, stacked on top of one another. Um, sometimes it helps to give it a quick iron to just kind of help make sure that it all sticks together. And then before you sew, what you're gonna wanna do is cut a hole on the top fabric. So I'm gonna take this and the easiest way to do this is just to fold your circle in half um, to take some fabric scissors. And then I like to cut about one to one and a half inches down. Um, just cut about roughly a one inch line um, so that that'll give you approximately a two inch hole. And this is what you're gonna turn um, inside out after you've sewed it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna put that back down here. So I have my two fabric circles, right sides facing together um, with batting behind them. Okay, and then you're just gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew a 1 4th inch seam allowance all the way around the circle. Start um, and end, well, I usually just end with a back stitch. Um, if you're the type of sewer that likes to pin, um, you can go ahead and, and pin it to make sure all three layers stay put. Um, I don't typically pin um, when I'm quilting or when I'm sewing small pieces. I usually only pin when I'm assembling bigger pieces together. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew one fourth inch seam allowance going all the way around the circle. hole that we cut earlier so what you're gonna do and it looks like my hole is a little too small so I'm just gonna make it a slightly bigger Didn't cut it big enough then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this right side out through this little hole and just keep in mind that you know the first few circles that you make and turning this inside out it might feel like oh boy this is going slow but once you get the hang of it um, it'll go a lot quicker. So what I suggest doing is cutting all of your batting, all of your fabric, and then you can, you know, sew 10 circles at a time and then turn them all inside out, one after another. And then you'll just kind of get quick when you're doing um, this one after another. Um, and then, so I've turned that right side out. So now the, the batting is in the center and I have the two nice fabric pieces on each side. And then I just like to run my finger along the edge like this to help puff it out, puff out all the edges. Just do a quick run through like that. Sorry. And then you just take it over to the iron and iron it nice and flat so that it looks pretty. There's that hole that I cut earlier. That's gonna be hidden later when we assemble our quilt. Um, and then once you take it over the iron and you iron it, you'll have these cute little padded pancakes, I like to call them. Um, and then you'll have your whole stack of that. And once you're done making all of these, then you're ready to assemble your quilt. And this is what your quilt is gonna be made out of.